It's a beautiful day. I love this kind of weather. So, all I have to do is unbury this car. Watch your toes. I love this forklift. Heck yeah. It has not been touched, messed with, seen, anything since the 70s. That's the last time it ran. And as you can see, clearly, somebody has taken the original 446 pack, because this is a VCO six pack car, taken it off and installed a four barrel on it. So your job, should you decide to take it, is I want to get this thing moved around. I want to raise it up in the air. I want to find out if the gas tank will hold fuel. And I want to get this thing running. I want to prove to those young'uns out there and the old ones, this is what we used to have to do when we were kids. You'd get something running that had sat for 20 years. 68 Dodge Super B. How about that story? That was amazing. Frozen crankshaft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. But if it'll crank over, I know I can get that engine running. Pretty positive of that, aren't you? Yep. So I'm going to get my phone. You have your phone. I want to get it moved inside before it gets too hot out here. So go ahead and get me a nice shot of the carburetor, the distributor. Get me a wide shot of the engine. I just kind of want that organic look so people can see we didn't stage this thing to run. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Just Sounds... get me. I'll be. I think I left it in the truck. Oh yeah, I think here it is. I got her. Sick of that, Mark. Beneath the fog, behind the rust, sometimes they come back. There's only one internationally recognized Mopar master, Mark Warman, joined by his friends, family, and dream team, the Ghouls. Nobody wants to take on the stuff that we take on. Reviving the past. 100% untouched survivor. Resurrecting the icons of American muscle. We are the Shaolin priests of Mopar. Uncovering stories. It's the baddest car we have here. And restoring dreams. The most iconic muscle car on the planet. Putting cars back where they belong. On the road. Here we go. Beyond a passion. Oh, that's wild. One man's obsession <laughs> with Mopar perfection. This is Graveyard Cars. So that little stunt really had me on edge. <laughs> We have a little DVD player in uh, in the tow truck, and one of my favorite movies is, of course, The Langoliers, Stephen King-based uh, novel. And for whatever reason, something's wrong with Dougie, and he doesn't appreciate it the way that I do. God, I hate that movie. So, like, he hates Craig Toomey. He thinks Craig Toomey is this hater. Hates him. Hates the movie. Hates the guy. So tired of that. I used to love The Langoliers. But Mark plays this movie every time we get in the rollback, and he backs it up to where the little girl screams, and I just can't take it anymore. Because I know somebody hates something, I double down on it. So in this particular case, there's a scene in there where the girl screams. Since Doug always puts earplugs in when he's in the truck, at this moment, he's not suspecting it now. Mark loves to make loud noises, and he knows I hate it. Yeah, maybe it is sick, but I personally get a lot of joy out of it, as weird as that is. A lot of joy. Real joy, too. Greg to me! Mark is lucky. I was able to bring the Super B around, put it up on the hoist so we can inspect it. So we know we got an old, crusty car. This is kind of what I expected. Now, when I looked at the underside of the car, I was able to assess that the tank is in such bad shape. Here's the tank, and you can see clearly, first off, it's not its first rodeo, so to speak, that things has been caved in by something, but that's not, it's not a big deal. It's more my concern right here, where you physically can tell that it's leaking fuel. So that's with 50-year-old varnish fuel in it. We'd never be able to get the varnish fuel out of it. And even if we did get it out and we put new fuel in, it's gonna pour out like a sieve. 
So at that point, it's not worth dumping gas into it and trying to get the fuel pump to do its job. It's easier just to bottle feed it because again, all I want to do is get the engine running. It doesn't have to run long. We just have to show that you can drag this old hole in and make it run and use your imagination that with a little more parts and a little more money, you could actually get it on the road. If you just look, you can see that the whole car is in dire straits from the rotten body, rotten frame rails, moving forward to the rear step wells that are completely, completely rotted out with a seatbelt hanging, I might add. This is what we usually have. Rotten main floors, floors that you could put your feet through like Fred Flintstone. Headers that have apparently over the years rotted completely off of the car and at the collector point, this is not cut with a torch, this is broken off from rust. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. So with that, I'm gonna let Doug lower it down and put a uh, compression gauge on it and see if we can get this thing to crank over and create any kind of compression at all. So the very first thing we have to do in this situation before I invest any time into making sure that it has spark or it has gas or it has compression is that the engine isn't frozen solid. That's one of the things that we run into a lot when cars set. The piston rings will freeze in the cylinders or seize. The crankshaft, if it doesn't have oil in it, will seize to the bearings. We've got to make sure we can get a revolution out of it or two or three before we go to the next step. All right, we got the A-team here, getting ready to uh, see if this thing will crank over. Doug, the first thing I would like you to do, Royal, should you assist him if he needs it? If not, cheer him on. I want to put a breaker bar in the socket. What size is that socket? Inch and a quarter. Can I go look at it first? Inch and three sixteenths? Sure, go look at it. Inch and three sixteenths? Picks it up every single day and uses it. They're not it. all every the same. Every single day. Well, man. Inch and three sixteenths. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. Royal got it. My bad. Most everyone knows me already. I've been here since the beginning. But for those who don't, I am Royal Yoakum. I am Mark's best friend. Mark and I have been friends since we were 14. I used to cut high school and go over and work on motorcycles at his house. Then of course it just developed in the cars. So naturally we became uh, gearheads. I would like you to put that on there and we're gonna see if it'll crank over by hand. By hand. If it will make 360, I want you to do another 360. We're listening for clanks, clunks, and things that can go bad. The motor is a 72 or three cast iron crank. Nobody cares about it. This is more for fun to see if the old A-team can get a car running. I like working with these guys because I don't get a chance very often to come over and spend time and actually work on something. So yeah, we had a blast. It reminded me of old times. You can go, oh, oh I there cannot. It goes. Why would it do that? That's insane. I had so many of them not do that. Very nice. I'm at a very fortunate part in my life where I can do something like this, call up my buddies, call Royal, say, get your butt over here. I want to do something fun and know that they're all willing to do it. Nice. Look at oh, that. look at that. I don't Cranky it. crank. Oh, oh. Ooh. that huh? did not sound good, did it? Could have been the starter letting go. Might yeah. have been the Bendix or something in That's there. True. Who knows? It's been yeah. 30 or 40 years. The wow. license rusted off of it. Whoa. Careful. I didn't break it. It's so nice having Royal over to work with us. We've had so many great memories together. It's like getting together with family again. Actually, it's better than getting together with family. Nobody expects anything from each other. <laughs> I didn't expect that either. I figured she oh, was- Oh God. You hear that rear main seal? <laughs> Something just squeaking like hell in there. You think if it's doing that, that thing will crank over? If it yeah. will, I would love to crank it over. That's if a good sign. See, Royal's good luck. Okay, so right now we have an engine that cranks over manually. We saw that with our own two eyes. Royal is letting it down so that we can put a battery in it and check out the cables. Now we have the remote starter hooked up. We decided to do that outside the car. We have faith in that starter. You have any faith in the starter. It's a thousand years old. We have brand new ones that won't work. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Ever do that? Yeah. Yep. I put six of them in a row and they're all bad. And go, Who's rebuilding these? One of the things that we deal with a lot is remanufactured parts because you have to get a remanufactured starter if you want it to look right. Now we tried to collect as many of the original sent them out, have them built here locally where we know they're being done right, but we're also at the mercy of the parts store. And I cannot tell you how many starters, how many alternators, how many distributors we put in and plucked them right back out again and tried another one. Boy, Mark is right about this. I have personally installed five alternators in a row trying to get one that works. All right, I have faith in you. Push the button. Push. Push the magic the button. button. Push. Crank it. Yeah. 
sweet. It actually sounds like it has compression. Yeah. So it actually cranks over. So I don't it, believe it. I will say that when Doug first hooked the battery up a little bit ago, the four-way flashers were working. I'll show you. I couldn't believe it. Somebody had hit the four-way flasher button. At some point. <laughs> Setting since at least the 70s. Go figure. What are the three things that we need to make an internal combustion engine run? Royal, number one. Compression. Dougie, number two. Fuel. Spark. Look at these guys. <laughs> Haven't missed a beat. Aha. Let's crank it over and see if that dilapidated coil has any spark to it. So, Mark wanted to get this thing running. First thing you do is check the oil, make sure it's got some fluids in it. Uh, it was full, it was a little dirty. We checked that off the list. So after checking the oil level in the engine, we went on to the wiring to the coil and strangely the coil wires were reversed. So the positive wire from the coil was on the negative side. The negative wire was on the positive side. So once the guys had the wiring corrected on this thing, again, this is all old stuff, so keeping it very simple, my theory was, let's just hot wire it. Hot wiring is simple. It's not like in the movies where you rip something out of the dash and touch two wires together. I don't know how to do that. In this case, we take a jumper wire to go from the positive side of the battery over to the positive side of the coil. That's the same as having the key in the on position with the battery connected. All right, you ready to crank this mother humper over? So, do we have power over there or to the points? Go ahead and check it out. We have power. Oh, it does. It does. After that, you crank the engine over, which will open and break the points, and that'll let us know if we have a live spark. Ready? Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's add some. Let's see what we got. We got spark. Oh, I love fuel. I love fuel. Hook yes, that wire you up, do. some gas on that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Big baby. Sparks and gas. So this part always scares me when we start pouring the fuel in the carburetor. Mark gets a little crazy with the fuel. A little bit is good, but more is better. So obviously you see what happens with that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we got a little bit of chug a chug. <laughs> Let's pour some more fuel in that mother humper. I like fuel. You like fuel? Royal's right. Mark loves the primer fuel. This is why I almost burned down the house on 14th Street. There is truth to this story. <laughs> I, I was terrified. I ran, you know, not my problem. I still got a life to live, right? I like fuel. I got faith in this old girl. Old Mopars never die. They just catch on fire. Catch on fire. Wouldn't be the first car we ever burned to the ground. Probably won't be the last. Let's try it. <laughs> That's as close to crazy as you can get. Did it even fire? Yes. Right now, I don't think it has a lot of compression, and it's an awfully slow starter. Yes. Yes. Hear that? Got some valves hanging open still, probably because everything's dry. Probably yep. not. Probably not even pushing the lifters much. So the problem with the dry engine means it hasn't ran in a long time. There's no oil circulating throughout the engine. Yeah, there's some in the crankshaft. We checked that down in the oil pan. But what there's not is oil up between the piston rings and the piston and the cylinder wall. And it's that oil that causes the seal, all right? So if you don't have that in there helping with that, then you have very little or no compression. That's number one. Number two is you also don't have lifters that are pumped up because there's nothing to pump them up yet. Not until it runs, not until the oil pump engages. So firing a dry engine is most difficult because you probably have very low compression and valves that aren't working the way they're supposed to. But it's okay, it's, it's gaining, it's, we're gaining, yeah. we're gaining. Okay, we now we think we have spark. We got gas in it. The last time it was firing two or three times, I think we just continue to crank it over. We got nothing to lose, it can't hurt the engine. Find out what we got. Sooner or later, the starter's gonna go out or the battery's gonna go out. Run the throttle, what are you doing? Oh, you're gonna pour gas on me, aren't you? I'm not gonna pour gas on you. That Dougie. Burn my little friend up, Royal. Here we go. You want me to burn my little friend up? No. Just hold it open. Come on. This is usually where I like to step back. I keep my eyebrows. All Mark knows is gas right now. Yeah. 
<laughs> that, nice. that is an engine that hasn't ran for 50 years, folks. Okay, 40 years. It doesn't matter, it ran. To me, the most important thing is that it ran. What is the problem with adding fuel to an engine? It's a necessity. I don't believe you it. You cannot kill a 440. You're right, Mark. Okay, I killed two of them, but that was because I left them out in the freezing rain and they cracked the box. Oh. I gotta run it for a few more seconds. I got your guys' prize, your guys' reward waiting on the other side of that door. We're shooting this mother. <laughs> so this is where he goes completely off the deep end. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bro, uh, <laughs> nah, I wouldn't set fire to you, dude. There you go. I rest my case. Some things never change, huh? <laughs> Marky catch Dougie The on good fire. news, it runs. The bad news is it's on fire. <laughs> oh. oh, that's fine. Let me get that gas out of there. <laughs> fire Marshal Bill, he loved that stuff. I know what the guys do. They talk all the time about this thing that I, I like to catch things on fire. I believe this may be the only time I've caught something on fire to the best of my recollection. Wouldn't be the first car we ever burned to the ground, probably won't be the last. I mean, I did catch Darren's car on fire slightly when it was, but it didn't burn to the ground, so that matters. And maybe, maybe the Superbird caught on fire or something. Nothing to get scared about. It's not like I burned down somebody's house. <laughs> They're getting out of control? Yeah, she's on fire. <laughs> That's very absurd. Oh, the gas Dougie. will burn off sooner or later. You know why this stuff doesn't offend me? The people who are saying I'm some kind of a fire bug and I'm obsessed with gasoline are trying to put the very gasoline fire out with paper towels. Let me crank it over and suck some of that down. Hey, she runs. I think it's the gaskets on fire. I think that was a success. It does run. If we put a carburetor and gas this thing, we could take it to the coast. Yep. Hey, it ran. We got it running. Yep. Piece yep. of cake. Yeah. And Mark says he has a big reward for us, right? I thought it was going to be paintball, go-karts. Pizza Joys. Oh, there you go. Something nice, Pizza. right? And what do we get? I've got a treat for you. I told you, if you can get this one running, you can get that one running. <laughs> <laughs> Marked. Marked? Yeah, the mark of doom. We get to get another car running. Yeah, what a reward. We're here to entertain Mark. <laughs> entertain Mark. Now, a car that we got in recently is definitely, hands down, maybe my favorite. If not, it's in the top probably five, because I do say that a lot. But in this case, it really is true. Guy calls me up a year ago, says, hey, I got a Superbird, pretty nice shape, not bad, but it's old, old restoration. In fact, the interior is all original in the car. Under the hood, I've taken some liberties, as Tony liked to do, chrome this, chrome that. The outside's been painted once, but get this, it's an original paint code 999, Petty Blue. They made 43 of them. Why did they make 43 Petty Blue 1970 Superbirds? The king, Richard Petty, number was 43. This Superbird is priceless. The gentleman who owns it had it given to him as a graduation present, and I think it was 1976 or 75 when he graduated high school. That's pretty amazing that he's had it all these years. So there's no price on that. It is numbers matching. It's got the original engine. This guy's been collecting parts for it too. Good parts, back when you could get NOS parts. Original fender tag, though it's been plated, chrome plated, can certainly get that off of there. The interior is as close to mint original as possible. He does have a new kit to put in it, but this one is so beautiful. The car only has 44,000 miles on it. You probably think it's a restored car, but it's not. If you got it up close, what we call a 20-footer. Looks great 20 feet away or on camera. But in person, you can see that it's substandard bodywork, substandard paintwork. Doors don't fit like they should. Deck lid doesn't fit like it should. Nose cone doesn't fit. It's the kind of car that's very worthy of restoring. I'm glad I've got an owner that wants to have it restored. My goal would be to make this car look better than it ever did when it left the assembly plant, the conversion plant, and have it back in time for him to spend another decade enjoying it.
So why not take the opportunity? We're so close now to fulfilling it. Why not take the time now, do the necessary little things. It ran 20 years ago when it was parked in a garage. We just showed we can get one running that hasn't ran in 40 years. It was parked out in a swamp. So we get this one running. The ultimate reward, the payoff, is the three amigos get a tool around Springfield in a real life Petty Blue Superbird. I think that's a fantastic payoff. So our reward for getting the Super Bee running was now we have to get the Super Bird running. I will say, this is one dang cool car and much nicer and cleaner than the Super Bee. Okay, I'm looking forward to getting this car running. We used to watch the races, Richard Petty was everywhere. All the 43 stickers were at all the buy mart. We would always go there and stock up, put them on our skateboards. So yeah, it's exciting. Yeehaw! Put the beak a little that way. Now cut it. Now cut the sweep. Cut the sweep. Cut the sweep. Giggy gag, giggy gag. <laughs> cut the sweep. Cut the sweep. Take the butt that way, buddy. I don't know why you won't take the butt that way, you lunatic. Please get back. Eat, eat, poop. If you can't understand, I'm not going to do it. Cut the beak. Cut Stop. the beak. Sweep. Collaborate and listen. <laughs> I feel Doug's pain. You know, I've worked with Mark this long 40 years. That's why I let Doug move the car. <laughs> Now, I'd like you to gently take the back of the car, which is closest to you, incidentally, and put it a little bit that direction, if you wouldn't mind too much. No, not at all. God, I miss you guys. God, I hate him. Come I on. I really in. miss you guys. That, that's what you'd call too much. Just like that? Right there. OK, guys, I think all you have to do is put the fuel tank in it, the sending unit, button it up to a point where it's safe, put a fuel filler in it, a tube, put some fuel in it, check the connections at the front, make sure the hoses and the lines and everything are still good, and if they are... Hey, look who you're telling that to. Yeah, I know, the guy that always leaves the hoses disconnected. Three times, three different cars. Good job, Royal. What's wrong with that? Hey, me? He forgot to tell no, you that him. he pulled me off of him to do Yeah, something. here we go. <laughs> three times. Three times he forgot. 71 Dodge Charger, he forgot that. Walton 72 Charger, he forgot it on that one. And I believe the Super Birdie forgot it on that one, all three times. Mark would always ask me to give him a hand on something. I'd go over to help him before I finished what I was doing. And then he would say, can you finish this for me? And then he'd go off and start something else. And it has nothing to do with anything so cool as he got pulled off. No, Royal, go over there and put that hose on. You got it, boss, I'll go put the hose on. You let him put the hose on, he comes back, how'd it go? It went great, thanks. If you're building somebody's house and you're putting a roof on their house, and it starts raining and you have to stop. You don't just say, well, it's done. You go back the next day and you finish putting the roof on. So none of that holds water. Well, you ever put in a fuel tank before? Yep. Good, because I haven't. Still to come, Doug and Hunter tear down GYC's second Alpine White Superbird. But Doug is still suspicious about Hunter's motive for leaving. When Royal and Dougie team up, will they stay in the zone or will they zone out? Will a reminiscent Royal relive the fuel line fiascos of his past? And could Mark's obsession with fuel ignite another flame? Now I'm scared. When Graveyard Cars returns. Since we're working on a Superbird, I thought this would be a great chance to use some of the footage that we have of our other Superbird that's here getting disassembled. It is a Alpine White, 1970, they all were 1970. It's the second Alpine White one that we've done. The first one was for my kill. This car is a 440 with an automatic on the floor and bucket seats. All numbers matching car. Now keep in mind, they made 1920 of these Superbirds. The Superbird we're working on was the 1,665th Superbird to leave the assembly plant. Mike Hill's car that we did back in the day was the 1,244th car actually left the assembly plant before this one did. And it doesn't matter what the VIN sequence is on these cars, folks. You could have one with a much lower VIN but delivered at the end of the run, or you could have one that came through really, really quick and got out before half of the ones that should have got out because they were putting them together as they had the parts and as they had the pieces and the demand on them. I miss working with Hunter. Recently, he moved away to Idaho to go to school and he's doing great. This Superbird is a great example of why I miss him. It took me six months to train him to correctly do a disassembly on a car and I could finally turn him loose on his own. 
and that's when he let us know he was leaving. Now that I think about it, I wonder if it was being called Bubble Boy, pushed him over the ice tray edge. This car has really been a pleasure to get disassembling because it's so complete. It was complete when it came here. It actually ran when it came here. So as you watch him disassemble that car, you realize this is a great car like the blue one is because all of the pieces are there that make it a Superbird. I can't emphasize enough that it's important to document the car as you disassemble it, which we do. We do it both with video, we do it with photographs. The other thing to keep in mind is carefully disassembling a car so as not to damage one of those parts I mentioned earlier. Put it in the right place. Don't make us go look for it later. If you're taking the door apart, put all the door pieces in one toad. If you're taking the, the dash assembly apart, try to keep everything together. Even tape things to it. It's okay. Write it down that you had it because it'll be three years, four years before the car is done. You want a list of what came off of that car. So we're ready to roll. We are. Just get these fuel lines in place. Boy, those last ones were rock hard. I cut that one off. I wasn't going to pull it off. I'm learning to work in smarter, not harder. Heck yes. We're getting smarter as we get into There's our that. golden years. There's a song about that in there. Yeah. David Bowie. David Bowie? Golden years. Da, bop, bop, go. Bop, bop, bop. It's pretty good, Royal. Yeah. I, pra your I practice band, at right? home in front of the mirror. It just has to go through here, Royal. Right through there. Okay. And then we're in. You ever put in a sending unit before? Yep. Some people put them in upside down. I've seen it done. Installing the tank is pretty simple. Two straps hold it in, but you want to put in the sending unit first. So the sending unit actually gives a signal to the gas gauge to tell how much gas is in it. And it also has the pickup tube in it. Royal's a professional. He's done this before. It's been a while. You notice how peaceful it is right now? Everything is calm. Royal and I are getting along. Nobody is insulting each other. I wonder why. <laughs> I can tell you exactly why. He's five foot eight with heels. Might weigh two, two ten. You have squinty eyes, receding hairline, big nose, and picks on people. Ring a bell? I'm just saying. It's okay, buddy. Everything's gonna be all right. I promise, Dougie. Promise? Oh, man, you promised me, buddy. <laughs> I told you, everything's gonna be all right. I love it. Okay, Royal. <clears throat> I can cut that off when we get that up there. One more of those. All right. Ready or not, here we come. So once we got the fuel tank sending unit in place, we just hang up the two fuel tank straps, tighten up the J-bolts, hook up the fuel lines, and we're ready to go. Cool. Looking good. Lined up pretty good. Got our fuel filler in place. Need a light, Royal? No, I kicked that habit. You can actually see up there in the dark. Yeah, except for I lost a hose clamp. Yep. I'm a sentence finisher, aren't I? Here we uh, go. You're the man, Dougie. I've always no. said that. You the man. You the man. <laughs> All right. Now, watch your head. That hurts. I gotta get a wig or a face. <laughs> something. Hard hat, my... man. We need to wear our motorcycle helmets when we're doing this. <laughs> Careful. Mark could have a heyday with that. So what? You can throw everything you want at us. OK. This is great. That wasn't a bad job, was it? It yep. is easy street from here. Dump in 10 gallons of gas without blowing ourselves up. Wish us luck on that one. Where's that fire extinguisher? <laughs> <laughs> well, who's going to put us out <laughs> yeah. if we're blown up? Uh -oh. oh. What's wrong? The vent tube? That goes on to that. Well, that's unfortunate. Where does that go? Oh, that's the... Return line. Yeah, that's the return line, and I don't see the return line up there. So it looks like they didn't put the return line on here the last time, so we'll just cap that off for now so we can get it running. OK. Sounds good. Cap it. Cap it? Just so it don't, just so right. it don't kick gas out on us and start on fire. No, we don't want that. I don't want that. Twice in one day, I don't want any more. Enough fire for one day. 
<laughs> All right. You start calling you Fireman Doug. Fireman Doug. <laughs> You got a funnel? I have a funnel. You got me, Doug. <laughs> you got me, babe. Is there a song like that? Sunny and Cher? Yep. Uh, Sunny had the long hair and... We both had long hair. So did Cher. <laughs> We're getting any in the tank? I'm trying. Yeah, you can go a little faster. A little faster? A little faster. Oof. That's bad, isn't it? Can we get a fan? Get a fan, for sure. <laughs> smells like moonshine. Yeah, I was going to say. How you holding up, Royal? <laughs> I can't pour any faster. I'm starting to see colors. <laughs> okay, there's five gallons. You a towel, Royal? Yeah, probably. Mark said 10 gallons per mile. Yeah. Or 10 gallons per, what did he say? 10 miles per gallon. He wants 10 gallons in this for some reason. How far is he gonna drive? I don't know. We should have checked the brakes. <laughs> Nobody told us to check the brakes. <laughs> okay, tanks in, lines are connected, you feel good about it. 10 gallons fuel, 5 gallons fuel, 20 gallons fuel. 10 gallons fuel. 10 gallons of fuel. How far are you going? I'm not going. <laughs> well, if it runs, we're going. We're all going out for a little ride. Oh, nice. We're go for a little ride, swing down the fins maybe, have a little din-din. You ever had their chicken fried steak? No. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. What's that face? I can't about? eat the gravy. It's water base. It's not dairy base. It's a water base. Oh, it's gravy. got powdered milk in it. Why will you poop your pants? <laughs> I don't know, but I don't want to. Is that find funny it. to you when a grown up poops his pants, street, Doug? BMW. I don't think it's funny that a grown man poops his pants. I think it's funny that Mark seems to think that Royal does this all the time. Yeah, it's been close since '78. Anywhere else you want to go that closed 50 years sounded, ago? Sounded like a good, well, we could go to Florence. If you'd open the door. <laughs> yes. Kept driving to Florence, for him to eat something to poop his pants on the way back, you want to spend all day well, he doesn't, in a car no, no, while he's I, marinating in his own extra. He doesn't have to do that. I can eat soft door, serve, it's not real ice cream. Yeah. Sorry, people. Uh, Hell no, I didn't poop my pants. I don't know what he's talking about. It's crazy. I would like you to please take it outside, turn it around, and bring it back in nose first, though. Okay. If you don't mind. I don't mind at all. So that's one of my concerns with Doug nowadays is he just seems to be losing more of a more of a grip on like when things are and where they are. He wants to go to drive-ins that haven't been up for 30 years. It's, it's the strangest thing. I don't know what to do. And the last thing I want to do is drive all the way over to Florence, spend two hours in the car with those two morons, go to A&W, have him get a great big fat double cheeseburger, which he's lactose intolerant, so immediately he's gonna start getting the mud butt inside the car and I gotta spend all the way back from Florence with Dougie and mud butt. No, I think I would know if I pooped my pants. I think I'd be the first to know. Anybody within 10 feet would be the second to know. So my guess is it's gonna start up and run just fine and we'll be able to go out and take it for a little drive. Does that sound okay to you? Sounds just wonderful. Okie dokie, let's, wonderful. let's do that. Get let's me a it. battery, please. Yes, sir. Hi, Doug. Hi, Royal. No, I'm not, but I wish I was. Take a look at that bad boy in there, a little 440 cubic inch super commando. I call it a commando. What you doing, Doug? Oh, I'm gonna put a battery in this car. Well, if you wanna cave in that fender while you're at it, that's okay too. I have never caved in a fender on a car with a battery. I've rear-ended a few cars, rolled a couple, drove a motorcycle off a cliff, left a car on fire on the freeway, but I've never dented a fender with a battery. See, let's start and see if it just cranks over. Let's start cranking this mother biscuit over. Boy, that sounds good. I think we're gonna be cruising down the highway. What do you think? It does crank over. Royal, what are you looking at? Fuel? Yeah. Why don't we prime it? It's free. Cranked over quick, so it should be able to spin enough to get some spark, put some fuel in there with it, and it should fire right up. When I say fire, I don't mean Mark's version of fire. I mean, fire as in startup. Why are you getting crazy? I just didn't want to slosh it all over. I didn't want to slosh it all over. I know, I, that's why I opened the chunk. I'm very careful with this stuff. I saw that on the last one. All right, try it. Fire it? I got big faith in this thing. 15 years and it'll start on the first crank. <laughs> it started. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. That's great. Try her again. That's amazing. That is amazing. You can't keep a good Mopar down. Beat it. 
I'm gonna bottle feed you. Go ahead. We don't know if the fuel pump's even any good. Might not be. The fuel line was rotted off of it. Uh, the fuel line was just pudding. Really? Melted from that. Well, maybe the fuel pump's no good. That's Try it. what I'm wondering. Now I'm scared. Anything in the filter, Royal? Nothing. And that's a, almost a pint of fuel right there just running that engine. So guys wonder why these weren't very popular after the gas embargo? That's a great <laughs> reason why. All right, Doug, I'm gonna have you put a fuel pump in it and then we're going to see if this thing will start. And if it starts, we're going out and we're going cruising. Okay. You <gasps> moron. Dougie just ruined the GoPro. Well, I hold you personally responsible for that. What I tell you, it's all our fault. Sorry. Stay tuned. The guys get a chance to unleash a one of 43 Petty Blue Superbird on the streets of their hometown, resurrecting dreams and remembering what inspired them. But while reliving the dreams of Mopar's past, they remember the best time but they may not remember the worst. Hit the key, Ooh. dead. Well, where are we going today, Royal? I don't know, Fins? Fins, they have good chocolate shakes? I don't know, I don't drink those anymore. We go to 7-Eleven and get a Golf. big gulp. Let's roll, let's roll in for you in the back. I guess I'm the shortest, huh? Yep. No. No, I'm not. <laughs> nah, I think I'm you're old. still taller than me. I'm old and my legs are short. Mark, Ooh. I'm vertically challenged. Yeah. Right. Hey, look at that. It started. Well, I always look short in my Superbird. Do I look short in this Superbird? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Royal. Thanks for keeping it real, buddy. How's the brakes, buddy? Well, they're a little uh, On the soft stiff. Side. No, yeah. they're not soft. They're not soft. All right. Yeah, hey, look Richard at Petty, the king, number 43. He's my friend. He's my friend. He's not your friend. You've never met the him in your life. The hell he's not. He was you know fun. Richard Petty? Yes, I do. Met him years ago. You saw him on TV. That doesn't make you his friend. Yeah, nut job. I met Richard Petty down at SEMA, and he kind of he kind of picked me out of the crowd. So when he saw me, he locked eyes, and he goes, oh, man, I, I love your show, man. I love your show. You're the best, you know? And I said, yeah, well, he thinks. Think Rick, I call him Rick. He went out of his way to even make a custom card just for me and signed it. It was something he made for me and I, and I cherish it today. I have it in my office. I think it's just awesome. We would watch Richard Petty race on Sunday. To be able to ride in these cars is just amazing. Never in a million years did we think that we would be able to be riding around in a Plymouth Superbird, let alone Petty Blue. Well, gentlemen, here we are in a 1970 Superbird, Richard Petty Blue. One of 43 ever made. That's a pretty amazing thing. I love it. It's a pretty amazing thing. <laughs> we didn't see him back then. Oh, uh, there was a Superbird on uh, Bob Cochran's lot. I remember that, and I don't remember the color. I want to say it was white. It was at the same time they had the Rambler Scrambler. I remember that. Over I there. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at that same time they had a bird in the back Look there. Out. Did I ever tell you that Royal that I bought? I found on eBay of all places a guy in Chicago, I think. Had a new old stock, never been installed, pair of Bob Cochran license plate frames. Really? Wow. How could it end up there? That's so crazy, yeah. So I've got those. If I ever bought that 72 Charger, blue with the white top, the first car I ever washed, uh -huh. I would put those on it because that would take me right back to when I worked for Cochran. Well, that's where uh, Rhonda's mom bought her Camaro. From 70, Cochran? From Bob Cochran's in Glenwood. And they still have it. No kidding. Yeah. My wife has a 69 Camaro. Her mom bought that car in 1970 from Bob Cochran's car lot. And I'll be restoring it shortly when I get time. Wow. Well, I know where those things probably belong, but you ain't got enough money. <laughs> <laughs> my little Camaro. friend. Oh, I wouldn't gouge my little buddy now. <laughs> Dougie, did you ever see any cars at Cochran's you like the looks of? 
Well, they had a rail dragster out there that I really had a hankering for. At Cochran's? Yeah. Oh, wow. I do not remember that. I believe what? it was a six cylinder, but it looked cool to me. Oh, yeah. That's I thought, good I'll stuff. bet that's faster than any of these cars. That's good stuff. I like this. This thing don't drive bad, does it? No, pretty Feel smooth. Pretty Feels solid. Pretty smooth. No, this thing drives nice. It drives like my old bird did. These old cars didn't drive bad on those old roads. No, it's not. It kind of floats. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like today's. The suspensions are so stiff on today's cars that you feel a lot of stuff. Well, there it is. 1970 Plymouth Superbird. Wow. Number 43. Man, that is sweet. Does anybody know the paint code for this thing besides me? Nope. Good answer. Doug? Petty Blue. The paint code. <laughs> nope. Good answer. <laughs> Nine nine nine. Really? Yep. That's the paint code. Sweet. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Remember Agent Ninety Nine? I do. Smart? I sure do. She was the best. Uh huh. Yeah. Stunning. Ninety nine. Now that was was that your IQ? I can't. That number rings it. Nothing like these old cars. Yeah. Old they have their old own muscle. smell, their own feel, their own ride. I mean, they. Yeah. I've had the Hellcat Red. I've had. I've had all the good stuff. You yeah. got the cheese, man? Well, where do you suppose that came from? Oh, oh, could the paper mill. But see, that was Jerry Crandall's favorite thing. He'd get you to take a lungful. God, Warehouser stinks, and you'd sniff it in, then he'd start laughing. That wasn't Warehouser. Oh. <laughs> God, he was a sick, sick man. I Heart never rode around with a guy. You never rode with Jerry? Nope. I didn't think Jerry liked me. He didn't. My mom said, anybody Mark runs around with, you don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's high praise indeed. Yeah, that's my mom. My mom said, I don't like any of your friends. I don't like them either, Mom. I just, she it's a lack me. of alternatives. I don't have any others. Your mom liked me. She loved you. You were the only one she loved. And she loved Dougie. Said, bless his little pinhead. <laughs> you know, she saw something was wrong with you way back I in the day. I had beautiful red hair. A lot of beautiful. it, too. Oh, yeah. Look at my pictures when I was 16. I mean, it was. Yeah, we were hippies. Thick, man. I looked like the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, that big, beautiful mop of hair. Mom said, your hair is so beautiful. I don't get it. I, I, but boy, I get, I get it now. I won't hear that these days. Oh, <laughs> well, you ain't heard that since third grade. In 1849, Alphonse Carr is quoted as saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. We say it all the time. As a kid, I never knew what it meant. Yeah, our town's changed, but it feels the same. The scenery's changed. The bottom line is, when you look in the mirror and you see the old man looking back at you, what does it matter? It's what's in your heart, right? That's the one thing is, what is in your heart? Follow your heart. That's what this is all about. So all those sentiments aside, I'll go right back to it again. The more things change, the more they stay the same. When I was 16, I'd come out of 7-Eleven with a big gulp, happy Royal would have his M&Ms. I don't need M&Ms very much anymore because they got milk chocolate in them. We were having a great time. Jump in the old Dodge Charger, hit the key, boom, dead. That's what we got. The more things change, the more they stay the same. That's life, folks.